Okay, we got the new live feed uh, started. Uh, this makes me feel a lot better having the uh, the short review for concise for people and to uh, take a look at it from all angles and get a more of an in depth discussion on this uh, in this video. So uh, happy about the way that uh, that's been going with the um, separating the. Uh, the stress level, I guess. I feel a little more at ease uh, once I've got the uh, all the little review stuff out of the way and I can just kick back and enjoy a whiskey. <laughs> Hopefully, um, the guys that, you know, want to get their hands on something like this can do it. Uh, when there's only, unfortunately, when there's only 261, um, I'm sorry, 280 uh, bottles of a, of an offering. I know it's really tough, and especially when they put it on the higher price point, like uh, like that, you know, with the tariffs and whatnot. But um, like DHS said, uh, and I caught your I caught your uh, comment the last uh, feed, but uh, I try not to say anything during the review uh, section. Good to see you, DHS. Yeah, this is this is a. Uh, as you can tell, I've only had a couple of sips out of it so far, but wow, I mean, look at that color. That is un freaking uh, unreal. <laughs> I mean, you can tell it's definitely going to be Sherry Oloroso or something, but I mean, that looks like a. This is as dark as I, or I recently had a Glendronic from my buddy uh, Stephen Connor sent me in 1992, I believe it was. I'm going by memory. It might even be earlier than that, but. um. So me a couple really old uh, PX slash Oloroso, I believe, Sherry uh, shared offerings. And uh, it, it was, this is about as dark as that was. Maybe a little lighter, but not by much. It's, it's unreal how uh, they got the color on this without any, you know. It goes to show uh, distilleries ending with more that you don't have to put dye in there to, you know, to get it that color. <laughs> There's more than one barrel floating around. Yeah, that's another thing. You, 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 just because this one is a, a 280 bottled uh, deal doesn't mean they might not have another release or another uh, another single cask uh, offering. This particular one, though, I have to say is is top notch. I mean, I probably should have gave it a 4.75 because it's really, really hard to fault it. Um, would a little more ABV help at all? I mean, it's hard to say if it's already 51 point, you know, 51.5% is, is already pretty perfect. I have to say, um, personal sweet spots, 48 to 50, but you know, if I can sip it and I don't need anything with it. Hmm. I mean, you really don't need anything. It, um, I didn't notice really a much difference with the one drop of water I put on it either. So, you know, they're all 280 bottles. So how many barrels are, do you think are floating around out there, DHS? If, if it's going by per barrel, if you get, um, I'm assuming that means you get 280 bottles per barrel, but how many barrels do you think are floating? I'm curious. Um, hopefully there's a, a lot for you guys to, uh, get into now the 180 is a little pricey to me. Um, I'm not saying it's not worth it. I was told that the tariffs are really tearing into the prices on a lot of these. Um, and some distilleries, they want to eat it, but they can't. I was having a really good conversation with my local guy uh, here in Maryland, and um, he was telling me about, you know, uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, the LMVH guys, they, they wanted to eat it, but they can't. Um, which is the uh, Glen Morangy and, and Ardbeg people. Um, there was one, I can't remember if it was who was eating the cost. There was one distillery that um, I think was able to, but it, it's very few and far between. Um, he was the one also that told me about the issue of uh, February maybe being a deciding uh, factor. And what I was told was that um, there was this thing where they were, thinking about, okay, either they're going to drop it, they're going to keep it at the 0.25% or whatever the, or 25%, whatever that the tariff level is, or boost it up to a hundred. They were, they were literally going to make it even worse. Thankfully, um, 
they decided to uh, not bump it up even higher. Uh, this is in February. Uh, I forgot what the date was, but he told me that there was a deciding date that they had to make this decision. And then finally, um, they came to the conclusion to keep it at the same rate, which is still damn high. So um, with that said, though, in three months, which is I know is a long time, but in three months, they're supposed to revisit this uh, and could either kill it keep it at the 0.25 or, or, or raise it up, but hopefully they'll kill it by then. Cause I know a lot of um, this is affecting the bourbon market, the scotch market. I mean, it's uh and people are kind of stuck in the middle of all this. And and really what this is all about is, is, is steel and uh, other forms of trade. So I, I don't know. It's a, it's a mess. <laughs> I don't want to get into politics because i got some really good friends on here that uh, we don't probably even, they don't know that I know what their political affiliation is. And even though it's different from mine, I don't care. <laughs> so there you go. Hey, Daniel, good to see you, man. I hope it's cool if you join in. Sure. You can, you can come anytime, man. Steven, good to see you too, man. Uh, you got to get your hands on one of these, Steven. I know you can do it because uh, you've got a good resources. Uh, this would look excellent on your bar, and I think you would be – and I know DHS would, would back me up on this. You will not be um, sad. I mean, I think 180 is a good price, even though it's on the higher end for a 15. But with the ABV being 51.5, with the tariffs that we're dealing with right now, um, I, I, it's 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 actually I think it's worth it. Um, I'd love to see a twenty-one year for that price, but you know, it's the craft too. I mean, these guys do do their own uh, everything, and um, even though it's no frills, they do a good job. Uh, I mean, they they give you everything, which I really like. Uh, distilled in May of two thousand four, bottled in October of twenty nineteen. Uh, age 15 years, 51.5 alcohol, number of bottles 280, and they give you kind of a just a back end story of the uh, the Oloroso sherry, but so the real big uh, type of barrels, uh, followed by five years in a refilled bourbon hogshead. So 10 years in the fresh Oloroso sherry, but and then 10, I'm sorry, I get that all messed up. 10 years in the fresh Oloroso sherry, but and then five years in a refilled bourbon hogshead. Okay. And the Hogshead, I believe, is the biggest one, right? Or is that the – I'm trying to remember which one was bigger. I know it goes uh, quarter cask. Oh, man, it's going by memory. And I just looked at this uh, just not too long ago, which is really sad. Oh, my. Which one is bigger, the Sherry Bed or the Hogshead, guys? Um, I want to say it goes Sherry Bed, then Hogshead being the biggest. But I get those two mixed up with the sizes sometimes. Let's go back here. Oh, Stephen already has one. Have you? Is it open? If it's not open, and you if you only have one, then I'm not gonna like ding you on it. But if you've got more than one, you better open one of those with me right now, dude. <laughs> oh my, uh, tariffs on scotch are related to the uh, airline issues, which is uh, unrelated to the still stuff. But okay, as a result of that, this was approved due to uh, the court case that the U.S. won. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, no matter what the underlying reason reasons are, I don't like it when I gotta pay more. <laughs> it's still carrying hard to find. Uh, I hear so many people talk about it, but never see it. It it is difficult to find outside of a true Scotch um, shop. If I know you're probably in, uh, I think you're in Alberta, right there, Daniel. Um, see, I'm not sure if they have like a kind of higher end uh, liquor stores. So if you're in one of those state run deals, they're all the same and you might not be able to get it like local. You might have to order it. Um, but if you do have any specialized stores that they certainly should have, is I got the 12, the eight cast strength. This is the old eight cast strength, the bourbon one, not the new uh, eight year cast strength cherry one, but I've got the uh, eight year bourbon one cast strength, the 12, and then two of the work in progress, which is the uh, cherry and the bourbon. Uh, and all four I got at the same place uh, just over time. And uh, this one, though, um, he gave me a heads up on him. was like, hey, you know, I'm going to have a bottle of this. And I know that you appreciate Campbelltown and Isla's distilleries especially. So would you be interested? And I'm like, hey, yes, and I'll take that Springbank uh, 
rum cask uh, 15 back there as well which we'll be doing a show on but i might break that one off and do that one a little later because i this one i know is really hard to find next show i'll probably do on the uh, kilhoman str it's a lot easier to find the uh, shaved um oh god i can't even get the acronym right <laughs> staved uh charred uh my i can't even remember it right off the top of my head but uh it tastes damn good it's a little one-dimensional i won't give everything away but um i think it's still uh still a solid dream and worth every penny of it um and still keeps me happy about home in, in general but we'll get in depth with that later uh, when i have time to do a little more homework <laughs> oh here we go oh wow i got you guys are like flying with the comments my goodness Let's see, it's a bit specialty. Yeah, DHS is right about that. Let me scroll up a little bit here and get caught up. But it is out there, true. Hey, Travis Faircloth, man. Doesn't this look like a Glendronic color? That is an unreal for a 15. This is Kilcarran. Uh, have you had it yet, Travis? If you haven't, I think you should definitely, uh, you know, try to get your uh, deal on it. Hoggies are small. Okay, gotcha. The smaller one's the hog's head. That's right. And then the... Uh, the uh, sherry but being the big one that makes sense treeport louisiana the canada is close by oh i thought you were daniel i thought you were uh whiskey throttle daniel i'm thinking of a different daniel well either way welcome to the channel <laughs> this whole time i thought you were a uh, whiskey throttle that's funny Barrel is less than a hog's head, but the way the yeah, Astro makes a lot likes it. I like that. That's an easy way to uh, to uh, memorize the uh, sizes that way. Just one and not yet opened. Had some of the eight year first fill sherry that people were going back over, but wasn't a big fan of it. Ooh. Huh. Well, if you weren't a big fan of that one, then maybe no, don't open this then because I have a feeling that that, well, what was the reasoning for your dislike, uh, Stephen? If it was like a maturation um, complexity thing, this might be worth it because the eight year is going to be half. Uh, well, not half, but almost half. <laughs> so I don't. I, that's a tough one. The eight was not good. Okay, too young. Yeah, the DHS just qualified what I was saying there. I had you a sample set aside too. Glad you found one. Oh, okay. Got one at Buddy in New York City. Ah, good deal. I like. I love it when people come together to get people what they're looking for. It's not easy. Uh, DHS bought a 25-year spring bank, so couldn't afford the 15-year run. Oh man, I don't blame you, man. A 25-year, I, I definitely would trade you. Uh, the 15s aren't bad, and I'll get into more detail when we do the show. I was pleasantly surprised to an extent. But I can see why it would confuse a lot of people. It, it reminds me a lot of the Springbank Green series, which I had to do a double take at first. But then once I realized what I was getting into, then I could appreciate it more. But that's a whole other, whole other story. Um, Daniel says, I'm still going to have to order one, though. I'm ordering a few uh, other things. A bottle of theirs would be a great addition. Yeah. Mm. I love that, that, that flavor. And it's spice the sweetness the balance is just unbelievably good and it does not taste taste young by any means i think dhs will attest to that um day year was very good in my humble opinion okay under a hundred dollars is hard to beat that bottle okay so he did like the eight year um version Kalman is still one of my favorites and real stuff yeah i love Kalman as well it minus half a half full. I don't know how to throttle some whiskey. <laughs> Do you know how to throttle some whiskey? I gotcha. It's been a while since I've uh, been in the last stream. Oh, okay. Well, welcome back. Yeah, me too. I haven't had a stream in a long time since last week. Uh, if you haven't caught the review for the um, Lafroy Carriages 15, I did a short version review, which is only like, I think, nine minutes long. So it's an easy watch. And then also do the live discussion after, which lasted for, I think, an hour and 45 minutes. So that's there still as well. Uh, so if you have the time, watch the long one. If you don't, watch the short one. <laughs> but welcome welcome back either way, man. I didn't I didn't remember the name, at least. And, and not just the other Whiskey Throttle Daniel, but the, the, this Daniel as well. 
Uh, you'll like this one. It's uh, more like an older age. Uh, yeah, Glendronic single cast. I, I thought the same thing, Travis. When I when I opened up this this uh, live feed, I was like talking about Steven getting me that uh, 1992 and 93 uh, and being the same, almost same color. This might be a little lighter, but not by much. And, and the taste is, is unbelievably good, I think. I uh, usually love Kilkaren, he says. Okay, Steven usually likes it. The big issue was the... Was the Sherry character was a little too earthy. Hmm. Let me see. Does anybody remember if they get an earthier um, character on the eight cast strength, the new Sherry one versus uh, this one? There is an eight year old cast strength that I had that was a bourbon type, but it's an older version. Uh, I have not had the new eight year uh, Sherry version yet. I might have to get my hands on that just to just to complete this set. A heavily peated is the other one I don't have. Um, I've heard mixed reviews about that one not being so good. What do you guys think of the heavily peated Kill Karen? Uh, give me some comments in the chat if you don't mind. So I do want to know your all's take on on that one. Uh, if it was you know good enough or not uh, not up to par. Let's see. That's complexity, man. <laughs> Travis is passing along, passing along the earthiness for uh, <laughs> complexity. <laughs> Let's see. Daniel's watch. Oh, drinking some dry. Okay. <laughs> that's that's okay. I was reading. The, I just got this new uh, whiskey uh, magazine. Um, I think it's the one for. Um, oh, the the big one. Uh, the whiskey advocate probably. It just came. Uh, talked about a lot of rye and got me excited to maybe uh, try some more. So I haven't had any in a while and I do like rye. It's just, you know, scotch takes me uh, on a whole different deal and I got to be in the, in the mood, you know, in the mindset for it. Looks like uh, Dan's going to check out the Lafroig Vig. I appreciate it. Hey, Malta, that's uh, Mr. Swami. Good to, good to be back and good to have you on the channel. Uh, what do you think of, uh, have you, uh, by chance, seen this in Canada, Swami? Uh, if you have, I would definitely pick it up. If you have a way to get it, I would definitely pick it up. If you ha haven't tried, definitely look into it. If you already have it, what'd you think of it? <laughs> Let's see. Eight is more earthy, more dirty, and completely lacking any refinement. The 15 is refined without being truly mature and is uh, still has some of that nasty mall character that makes kill Karen. <laughs> Okay, I'm 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 down with that. So I think you should open it up, Steve. <laughs> I think I think DHS has convinced me to convince you to open up your uh, Phil Karen fifteen. <laughs> oh my! I cannot disagree more on the long row fourteen versus the Phil Karen eight. Oh my! I've uh, already killed one of my bottles, Long Row 14. I haven't tried that one. I've had the regular Long Row. Um, and so far, that's the only Long Row I actually have, have, have tried. I liked it. I mean, it wasn't – it was kind of what I expected. It was a little pricey, I thought, for what you get for a, a non-age uh, statement. But it's it still was a good taste. Um, but for 75 bucks, it's like Spring Bank 10, Long Row – not without an age statement. Um, I'm almost leaning towards the spring being 10, but I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. Same price. That's what makes it difficult. Um, but I'll try the 14 if I see it. <laughs> Steve says, uh, do you just uh, hit the wrong emoji? <laughs> Scotch is so much better than rye, but yeah. Not even close. Rise of Riff on bourbon and scotch can be anything it wants to be. Love the freedom of scotch. Yeah, cheers to that. That's for sure. Great man's thing, definitely. <laughs> I'm going to move to the... Uh, oh, Kalila 15 impeded. Yes, that sounds good. I've got a 17 back here that's impeded. Um, which It was funny. I'll tell a little quick story about that. When I first got it, I thought it was... Only like a two and a half star whiskey. And the reason for it was because I did not give it time to oxidize. And in that particular bottle, I don't care what anybody says, when I first poured it, even down like halfway through it uh, in the first month or two, all the way down like half 
three fourths gone. It was extremely salty, extremely briny, very olive like to me, and and I just couldn't get past the green olive notes uh, and black olives for that matter. It was it was a salty, briny, olivey mess. I, I just didn't understand it. It just didn't make sense to me. I'm like, why are people all into this? And I tried it with water. I tried to let it sit out for 17, 20 minutes. I, I had tried to let it sit out for 45 minutes and it just did not jive. I put it away for like, you know, um, I don't know, probably a good three or six months. Came back to it. And unfortunately now there's only like the heel left. But I still had probably, I don't know, probably, you know, a good one third of it left, one fourth left of the bottom. Came back. It was magnificent. Didn't have any salty notes or olive notes at all in it. It completely transformed into a well balanced, um, sweet, salty, savory barrel of goodness. I don't know how. I, I mean, I, I I could do notes again on it. I probably should at some point before I killed the the bottle completely. But definitely did a complete. Uh, what would be a 180 or 360? <laughs> I did a, a complete turnaround. I'd be a 360. Yeah. Uh, on um but that would be where i started i guess it'd be a 180 if i came at opposite of what i was 180 <laughs> argue with myself on this um did a 180 and, and fell in love with the bottle and i, I would probably rate it a 4.5 so it goes to show you just because you open a bottle too sometimes and it could be you know 40 percent 30 40 dollar whiskey it could be 30 or three thousand dollar bottle whiskey if you open it up, you pour it, even if you get halfway through, if you're not digging it, put it away for a while. Let it get some oxidation. Don't put it in the sun, but, you know, get let it get some oxidation. Let it breathe a bit. Maybe decant it. You know, I've, I use decanters, too, for whiskey sometimes. If I know, like, if I'm doing, like, a Lundronic Portwood that takes a minimum of 45 minutes to open, and that's no exaggeration, and it's been – well documented, well tested by myself and a couple other people. You got to decant it, or it's not going to make sense. So, this is one of those rare whiskeys I've run into that's like that. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. Oh my! Catching back up on the comments here. Great, Dylan the Long Room. Is that a old uh, fifteen or the newer fifteen? I have the newer fifteen. And it's not as good versus any of the other people. I've got a 17, actually. It's back here. Um, I, I know that they redid their line recently where they have a 15 unpeated and an 18 unpeated. Um, they used to have a 15 and a 17. Um, and this is the 17 that I've got. And the other one is the Moak, which is a travel retail exclusive, uh, Kalila. It's good, but it's completely different profile. It's very vegetal. Um, got some floral notes in there. I, I still liked it, and I'm not really big on the vegetal whiskeys usually. Thankfully, it's well balanced. Um, it was still, you know, it wasn't like a powerhouse. It was probably like a 3.5 out of 5, a uh, little better than average, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like the Kalila 17 oxidized. That is a 4.5 level whiskey, but um I don't know. Maybe uh, I already killed it. Maybe I should have let. Maybe Kalilas need to sit out a whole lot longer than most. I'm not sure anybody else uh, got that out of Kalila. Uh, the twelves are good out of the out of the gate. Never had a problem with the basic twelve. Um, I need to try their Distillers Edition still, and the uh, eighteen are on my to do list at some point. What exactly is the bottle? I've heard. Uh, I haven't heard anyone say. What exactly is the bottle? Uh, you mean the Clearless 17 Unpeated, or which bottle are you talking about there, Daniel? Is the Clearless 15 Oloroso single cast? Uh, yes, this, well, no, this is, um, if you're talking about this Clearless, this one is the, um, it's 10 years in fresh. Oloroso Sherry, but followed by five years in a refill bourbon hogshead, if that's what you're asking there. Oh, what was the uh, Kalila 17 like? I, 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 that's what I was. That's the one I was talking about. At first, it was extremely olivey, salty, brainy. I thought it was a mess. 
at first it was only like a two, two and a half star whiskey. After I drank half of it, I thought I'll just put it away. Maybe offer it to guests if I'm not really too keen on it. Maybe someone else appreciate it. You know, it is a 17 year old Kalila. Well, lo and behold, that's the one I went back to and had all the great notes and, and it was complete 180. It was a completely different whiskey just after sitting uh, in the bottle for a good three to six months with half of it I already drank. Oxidation really uh, helped that one, I think, a lot. So, but um, yeah, this one is. Um, this one's something else. I can't, I couldn't believe how how good this ended up being. This is definitely one of my favorites of this year. Um, I do have an R Big Nineteen uh, Travana. I haven't opened up yet uh, from last year, uh, so this will still remain my favorite whiskey of this year so far. Um, by by a good amount, but I did just get back into the game recently, so. We'll see what happens with uh, with time and uh, being able to try some different things. Mm. Well, what happened? I'm, I must be missing half of a of a conversation here. <laughs> anyway, oh my! Anything good on the um, on the uh, news uh, for what you guys have heard, I talked about the tariffs earlier. Um, three months, I know it's a long time, but maybe if we get lucky, March, April, May. I think he said it was in the middle of the month, like the May the 18th. Could be 13th. It was a, I think I'm pretty sure it was a 10th uh, date, but hopefully they'll kill um, these tariffs because they're really killing us. Um, Anybody, uh, I guess Swami's from Canada. And are you guys having the, the same crazy uh, tariffs uh, over there, or is it just an American thing? <laughs> Probably just us, I imagine. But oh well. Mm. I just can't get over how good the um, the spice level on this is because. I've had a couple where at first, like the what comes to mind is the Tamdu de Billiardrium, uh, very good whiskey. Don't get me wrong, but that sucker out of the gate is extremely spicy hot. I mean, it's it's not only is it already high ABV, but the the, the spice, the cinnamon, almost like a, a ghost pepper, chili pepper, it'll blow your socks off. I'm I'm so glad that, that even though that they uh, with the high ABV, it, it doesn't you out it's such an easy sipping whiskey too and the funny thing is i don't know if it's just low on tannins or 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 what but it's it's just so easy to drink i had a, a couple glasses the other day and, and usually i would feel it after you know i mean these are big glasses i was given the the otelix pour you know matter of fact i'm gonna have a little bit more um i was given the, the otelix pour and i had a couple big ones and uh it was really easy to uh, to sip and not even really notice uh, anything really. I don't know why, but um, let's see. Um, not to get into Kelly discussion, but I am a Kelly fan, so people. Nice. Oh, it's okay. I don't. This that's what's great about having the uh, the review first is I get to to focus on that, and then when it ever comes to the after show, yeah, I'll talk about this one, but. Anything's open. Anything's game. There's no, uh, there's no limit to what you guys can bring up. I don't, I don't have a, you know, an agenda or anything. <laughs> what would be a good Kilcarran bottle as a first Kilcarran bottle to buy? That's a good question. I would definitely always recommend everyone just to get their their toes in the water with the Kilcarran Twelve, uh, which is this guy back here. Let me see if I can roll back here without running over anything. Well, I, of course I cannot. <laughs> Just to give you a, a better look at the at the can, it says what you're looking for. It's a nice 12 year, uh, real basic. I like the fact that it's uh, it's well styled. It's noticeable. It pops, but they don't have to spend a boatload on marketing like some other people do. And I love the fact that they put that on there. It's easy to see. <laughs> Uh, you get your age statement. You get your no chill filtering. You get your no coloring, and this is a this is a modest forty six percent ABV. Um, 
Now, that's the best way to start with Clocoon. The second one I would go to is the eight-year cast strength, which is back there as well. Um, and that is um, for a little bit more of a mature whiskey drinker that doesn't mind taking more time. Uh, the Kilkerran 12 is out of the gate great. A couple of drops of water is great. You don't have to play around with it. You don't have to take your time. With the eight-year cast, uh, cast strength, it takes a little bit of play with the water to get exactly to what you might like them for your profile so keep that in mind it's not a beginner's whiskey at all um the sherry wood and the bourbon wood um work in progress series uh both of them are good um the sherry wood is good but it doesn't come close to this this is like a like night and day difference quality level they've come a long way since their works in progress series which might be extremely hard to find now i don't know um they do still have some where i live so it's very possible to be able to find it i would think um it's i would not hesitate on trying the works in progress at first i was kind of like well if it's a work in progress is it going to be you know something i regret <laughs> giving it a try but no i was i was wonderfully surprised it was at least a four star whiskey on both sides i think they were about fours uh this being a 4.5 uh kill killer and 12 was definitely a 4.25 uh and the uh cast strength eight was still a 4.25 but just keep in mind with that one it's going to take a little more effort with this being that's what makes this whiskey in particular so great is that even with the high ABV being cast strength practically, it, um, it you don't need to, to do anything with it. It's a, it's a no fuss, easy pour, let it sit out for 15 minutes. But that's all you got to do. And, oh, my, I, I wish I had like three bottles of this for Christmas because this is like the perfect Christmas uh I think uh, whiskey. Uh, it, it reminds me a lot of the Balvenie 15 single barrel. Also of a really good McAllen, um, like the Edition 2. Um, it also reminds me of like um, a really good Abelauer, like a like an Abana, like a, a, a but a low um, numbered uh, cast batch. I'm sorry, not a cast, but a batch. Uh, like 53 batch series of the Abanaba um, Abelauer. So there you go. I mean, that caliber, it, and it's actually, I think, it exceeds some of those. Um, the only thing that the Abana, the old series uh, batches, might win against this one would be the finish. I do love the clove finish on the Abana. Uh, this one, though, has a really nice cherry cordial it, with cream, even like an ice cream, but not cold. It's, it's hard to describe. And what I love about it too, even though this is a, um, I think this is uh, for some reason I want to say Fino. They say Oloroso in the bottle. Though. One second. Yeah, I think somebody made a misprint because I remember I was doing um, some reading behind the scenes, and Distiller for some reason has Fino sherry listed, but obviously, well, is is Fino a type of Oloroso? I get those mixed up because I know that you got Oloroso. You've got PX, but with Oloroso, you also have Amontillado, you have Fino. It is a sherry, so I guess it would be in the same type of class. So this specifically is a Fino, most likely, type of Oloroso. I'm, I'm assuming that's what they mean by that. But the, what's great about this is it's not very dry, and I'm not a big fan of ultra-dry finishes. This one definitely lingers and i think the mouth coat is the reason why the finish is so nice and long and it doesn't um dry up on you like a lot of these uh these guys do one two the clearly 15 and peated yeah i don't blame you there man that's a really really good one new dram drinker welcome first time here i'm loving the chat love the kill karen heavily peated recently did a video from roy of aqua oh, okay aqua vitae yeah cheers to roy uh, he's he's a master. I haven't got to see a, a, any of his vids for a while. Uh, just been so plum busy with work slash hobbies and and this and, and all sorts of stuff. But uh, he's the reason why I always look at the ABCDs 
the age, 12, uh, sorry, 15 years. The B, which is the bottle strength, the 51.5. The C, is it chill filtered or not? Hell no. D, is it dyed? Is it got E150 all over the place? Hell no, it doesn't have anything. So there you go. That's the way to make a whiskey. It's It should be, you would think, easy, but a lot of these, just, especially big distilleries, don't get it. Hopefully they'll figure it out. But welcome, welcome. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, anytime I see a new face, I love it. And uh, he's a good guy. So I haven't done a show with him or anything like that. That would be really fun to do. Uh, that would be something to have to time exactly right. But, uh, you know. You do what you can. <laughs> uh, he sent me a really good handcrafted Lafroy once. That was that was awesome. And I got to figure out how to get something over to him, uh, salsa style. It's just, uh, I mean, what do you get a guy like that that's got the world at his fingertips? <laughs> I mean, he can walk, literally walk, probably to any. Well, he took a boat, I guess, to Isla if he doesn't live in Isla. I think he lives in Glasgow. But he, he, could, he could literally walk to like 75% of the distilleries there. Uh, what do you get a guy like that? It's kind of a tough one. I, I guess I should ask him what he likes bourbon-wise and, and try to do some digging because I'm from uh, Louisville originally. But sadly, I don't have any connections because I don't ever deal with bourbon. So I guess I got to build some for maybe some for some trading or something. <laughs> Good to see you, Donner Pass. Uh, awesome. How you two uh, are doing great, fun content. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'll have to check it out. I haven't. Uh, I haven't seen uh, any in a, in a while on other channels, but I'm gonna definitely take the time to do it because I always learn something when I watch other people too. Is you can never know too much about this kind of stuff, really. Uh, you, it's almost like any subject, you know, math, music. You can, yeah, learn the basics and, and get into some, you know, higher stuff, but you can get really into the weeds and and get into um, the, you know, what's the uh, quantum physics of, you know, of whiskey type of thing. <laughs> Let's see. That 15-year Oloroso, they are also released a Port Fino or own bourbon and Madeira versions for different countries. Are you serious? Wow, I did not know that. I've got so Kilcairn's released a port version, a fino, a rum, a bourbon, and a Madeira. That is crazy. Oh, okay, so this one's the 15, and I guess they must have had a misprint on their deal. Um, or he had a okay. I'm glad you said that because yeah, the picture in his bottle says Fino. So I'm gonna have to uh, I'm going to have to let him know that he has a whole different uh, version. Uh, my buddy uh, was the one that posted the distiller picture uh, and his says Fino. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you told me about that. Cause I didn't realize they had all these different ones. Well, hell now I'm going to have to collect them all. They're like fucking, excuse me. They're like Pokemon. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. We're, I already told him that this isn't for kids, so I shouldn't have to worry about the cursing thing, I guess. You getting the GAS raffle at Deadline tomorrow? No, I don't know anything about a raffle. Oh, that's for Steven. GAS, what is that, uh, guys, just out of curiosity? Anyone have the uh, Lefroy Three Wood Carriages? Yes. Uh, I don't know if I did a review on it, and I wish I did, because I, I think I already killed the bottle. It's excellent. It's a four-point five at least out of five it's very well done it's it's well balanced i've had other people try it in my presence to see what they thought as well and it's always been a hit um and i'm surprised i'm not a big fan of the triple wood by itself because i thought it was almost overly woody and oaky and all that but uh with this even though it is the cast strength triple wood it's not overly oaky. It's got a really nice balance of a lot of sweetness and savory notes from the um, the bourbon, the cask, the you know the whole process. It's it's uh, it's unbelievably good. Really, it's got a lot of uh, vanilla cream balanced with it. It's a uh, it's not all over. I don't want to say it's all over the place, but it's just it's just got a lot going for it. And I thought it was a pretty good pickup. Let's see. At least just for a person that wants to 
wow, these comments are all flying by. One second. Um, this is just for a uh, person that wants a sherry smoked whiskey. I have a buddy who is, uh, sticks with only more 15, and it's hard to move, get a move off that unless I buy. Okay. I would definitely suggest um, – is is he opposed to peat? Like when you say smoked, are you? Um, has he? How do you think he would enjoy an Ardbeg Oogadol? Because that's like one of the best sherry whiskeys I've ever had. I also really love the Lagavulin Distillers Edition. I know some people don't like their, uh, you know, they love their Lagavulin 16 more than their Distillers Edition. For me, I like the balance with the sherry, uh, the PX, the sweetness. That also is a factor if he likes the PX or the Oloroso more. Um, hmm. Yeah, the 15 Darkest has got some funk. Uh, it's got a little sulfur. Uh, I would have him try a Ben Nevis. Uh, those are really good and comparable to the Bowmore 15 uh, Darkest. The Ben Nevis 10 is a really good. If you can get the 15, it's even better. Um, doesn't have a lot of smoke. Uh, it just depends on what his smoke factor that he likes is. Another really good one, besides those two that I mentioned, would be the um, the Lafroy PX cask is, is un unreal. Um, I'd really like the um, – it's Madeira, but the, the Carriages Madeira from Lafroy is also really good. As far as Bunahaven, um Sherry – I mean, they have the red wine. The Arena Grena is a uh, is the uh, red wine cast deal. The Krugvona is is I uh, believe a sherry with a peat. Uh, that would be maybe a good one to try if you can get your hands on it. I think it might be Travel Hotel exclusive. Don't quote me on it. I'm pretty sure it is though because it's one liter. Uh, but the Bunahaven Krugvona is a really good um, possibility. I'd say um, for Kilholman. The uh, lot gorm is is excellent. A really good amount of smoke. I think that that's a. Uh, I want to say it's a Laroso sherry, but I might be wrong. It's a sherry cast matured. I know that. I can't remember if it's a Laroso or not. I'm pretty sure it's a Laroso because it's not overly sweet like a PX would be. When I say overly, I don't mean too much, but just you know, uh, more so than a uh, Laroso, but. I'd say those are good ones. Uh, that would be the big three. Lagavulin Distillers Edition, Kilhom and Loch Gorm, uh, Arbeg Ugadal. If he's okay with that smoke level, that's that's my only uh, iffy thing on that one. DHS is not too happy with the carriages three-way. Huh. Okay. Hey, Ben, good to see you, man. Cheers to you. I haven't done any SNWS in a while, and I have to... Uh, Maybe uh, get back on the on the wagon at some point. I just um, needed a break and, and thought I'll come back maybe uh, at some point with that. Didn't have any issues with anything. All the bottles have always been good. I really especially love the uh, the Dalmore one that you guys have. Uh, that Glen Scotia one that you picked out. The Glen Tour is is really good. All of them are are, are excellent. So. Uh, don't think that I, if I'm not doing a show on it that I didn't like it. That's for sure. Uh, Steven says he's uh, with you. The cure just disappointed me recently. It's young, but I think it's enjoyable. I need to open uh, my bottles and try a normal setting. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really get a lot of youth um, or immaturity out of the carriages three wood per se, but not to say. I wasn't really looking for that. That's, I think that's the think that's the thing you got to remember when you're dealing with the carriages series. You're never going to get some ultra refined aged, you know, whiskey. Minus the the carriages fifteen was 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 interesting, but I'd rather have a younger, as long as it's not overly immature, a younger, vibrant whiskey with a good cask. It's powerful. It. It just tastes great, I thought, but that's just me on the uh, on the uh, three winged uh, carriages. But you know, it's all subjective uh, with with a lot of this stuff. Minus, you know, I mean, the quality you can't really deny, but the which version of um, carriages or which version of you know um, the uh, quarter cast versus the triple wood. I mean, you know. I like them all except the select. <laughs> and everyone knows it too, pretty much, I think, at this point. 
the uh, let me go back up here. Daniel says the uh, Bomber 15 is peated and loves it, but he thinks the Ogre. He liked, okay, the Ugi, but didn't know where else to go. Oh, okay. I would definitely say the Lagavulin Distiller's Edition is a definite go. The Kilholm and Lot Gorm is a definite go. Um, a Kilkirin, a Sherrywood, it works in progress. This one, if you can find it, um, those are, are, they're not overly smoky, though. I mean, they do have some smoke, and, but it's more of a spiced, I'd say, than a smoke. Um, who else has got a really... Does Talisker have any sherried? The Port Re was okay, except I didn't really like the uh, lack of finish on it. I'm trying to think of it. Does anybody know of a Talisker that's got a really good smoke sherry? I mean, I think if the 18, it's got a lot of really nicely balanced florals and complexity to it, but it's not a very ultra smoky. Maybe the this, the uh, Talisker's Distillers Edition. I really like that one, and you can get it for about 80, 82 bucks, somewhere around there. I think that's um, I think it's a uh, pretty decent. I think it's pretty good, worth uh, worth a try. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Um, Springbank, um, they would have. I know they've got a couple. Now this is one you have to get into the pricier stuff, but they have some nineteen-year-old like cherry cast matured stuff that's unreal. But this is when you get, when you get to the 18, 19 year old stuff. It's like easy two hundred and you know eighty, three hundred dollars. So it's kind of crazy with uh, with some of those specialized uh, one of three hundred type bottle situations for Springbank. But that's another option. Um, you get what you pay for, but you know you don't want them to walk in that kind of level without knowing it's what he likes. If he's never had that Dunnage uh, warehouse kind of thing, so. Let's see. Oh, okay. DHS says, uh, Fino is the best Lafroig outside of the 25 I've had. The Fino is good, but I don't know, man. If you ever had the Portwood from 2013, that's the best carriage that's ever made. I don't care what anybody says. And the Amontillado is a close second. I thought that was outstanding, too. Um, the Fino is not bad. I mean, I'm not, I'm not knocking it, but the 2014... Uh, I'm sorry, the 2013 Portwood and the 2014 Amontillado, man. Those two carriages, I think, are my two, top two favorite, if I had to pick out of all of them. But the Fino is probably third, in my opinion. But that's 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 that's, that's, that's a pretty good one, actually. Not against it. <laughs> that's okay, Daniel. I'll see you when you get back from the dogs. Had the 15 over the weekend, really unique, but not great. Which 15 uh, are you talking about, uh, DHS? The carriage is 2015 or the carriage is 15-year-old? I regret not buying um, more Fino carriages. That was a poor decision. Okay. I think I had two of bottles of that, not to make you feel bad, but I already drank them both, sadly, because that was a good one, I have to say. I'm not going to knock it. I'm going to send you some a little for like, oh, that are so powerful and blows away younger ones. Okay, I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> I can only imagine what some of the older Lafroyd stuff is like, because I bet it's just unbelievably good, over 20 years old, and retains the pee, but as complexly. That sounds like a win-win situation. Ben loved the carriages uh, mid-year cast when it first came out. Yeah, I, I, a lot of that was one of those split decision ones where I heard some people loved it like I did, and some people weren't too into it. I don't mind a sweet whiskey, so I thought it was well done. The Dark Storm is Sherry. Okay, that would be a good pick. Um, the problem with the Dark Storm is that it's travel retail exclusive. So that's the tough thing about some of these that you, you're like, oh, that would be a great one because that's got a great taste. The problem is with the damn exclusive, exclusivity. I can't even say it. Exclusivity? Is that a word? <laughs> I think it is. Um, of, the, uh, of that particular bottle. So... You can't just run out and get it, unfortunately. Maybe you could order it if you're really lucky. I didn't even think about the LK Lot Gorm. Yeah. I have um, I a bottle of the 2016 Castor 12. That's a good one. That's uh, that's 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 right up there with the 10. Uh, depending on what I'm in the mood for, I love the 10 and the Castor 12 for different reasons. I still see the Phenol Carriages down here in a couple places. Wow. And I do too. I have seen it. Uh, 
still out and about. So if you're looking for a DHS, get your ass to the uh, East Coast. Uh, I think Stevens in Tennessee. So maybe just head south first. If you don't see it there, head out east. <laughs> You'll run into, I'm sure, a bunch of bottles of it because I have seen it out here a lot, actually, still uh, thinking about it. Let's see. Whoa, 2019, Spring Bank 21, the top Spring Banks, yeah, top six at least. Yeah, that's the one I think he was going on a lot about, I would, if I remember correctly. We had some until a few months back, then a few for anyone, okay. Uh, the port and rum cast sound like a winner, and that's for the um, – Spring Bank, I take it. Uh, Travis, uh, stay tuned. Uh, next show will probably be the Kill Home and STR first. Then after that, I'll probably do the uh, Spring Bank. Uh, I've got it sitting up there, actually. The uh, Spring Bank 15 rum, rum cask. I did get my hands on that. And uh, that'll be a good show. It's going to be interesting. Let's see. What are the two Kalila bottles you Oh, that's the Kalila 17 impeded in the Kalila Moak. The Moak is the uh, travel retail exclusive one, which has got some vegetal properties, which are interesting. And uh, just rewind, I talked about that earlier. <laughs> I'd have to debate my 17-year cherrywood. Yeah, that's a good one, 19-year cast. Ooh, single cast fresh sherry. God, I bet that's an unreal. That's the one that's 280, 290, if I'm, I remember. 18-year fresh port, which I had a 19-year version of that. It was really, really good. I can't remember what year it was, but uh, it was probably 2016, I'm guessing. There's only like 300 bottles of it. I remember that. 2016, uh, Spring May 25. Oh, but that's unreal. 2018, Spring May 25. And maybe even the 18-year single cask fresh sherry. Oh, man. That just sounds like just insanely great. So great question. I've seen the storm, but not the claim top storm. Yeah, there is a big difference, Daniel, and the dark storm is the one that's uh, definitely got more smoke. It's um, it's better quality, but it's travel retail exclusive. You'll have to either travel to get it or order it some way. Um, there are ways to get it without traveling. Um, yeah, then I might have to Google on that one. Um, excuse me. My nose has been bothering me all of a sudden. I hope I'm not getting uh, cold. That would be horrible. Um, thankfully, I can still uh, use both nostrils. <laughs> Where do you uh, put the... Go, um, Karen 15 Sherry in all of those. I think he's asking DHS on that. It's not in, <laughs> it's not in this discussion. <laughs> I mean, the spring makes are all starting the $200 and worth it. Yeah, that's true. I'm still figuring out this whole thing. That's okay, Daniel. You're, uh, you're doing, uh, doing well. You're coming to the right place. Cause if you want to learn about whiskey out of the people that go to my show, it's always at least, I'd say, you know, 10 to 15 really well knowledge people that just like to talk about whiskey in general. And uh, we'll steer you in the right direction, even if we don't know every answer that you might ask. <laughs> Spring Bank 12 is my go-to. I love it. Have four bottles. Yeah. The uh, cast strength is, is unbelievably good. Uh, my first one was the last um, iteration, I guess, is the word for it, um, version. They changed it recently. I haven't had the new, new one, uh, but I have a feeling that it's probably extremely similar. I've heard that Spring Bank is not the most consistent, unfortunately, because they are a pure craft whiskey. But the quality has always been good from what I've heard. I mean, even going to their sister distillery, Glengyle, which does Kilcarran, I've not had a, a bad experience in any Spring Bank bottle. I've had the, the 10, the 12 cast strength, the 15, the 18, the 14 green, the 13 green. The 19 uh, port, 15 room. I mean, I've had a boatload. I, I go on and on, but um, I've never had a bad experience. And even if it's not it got the, the most, uh, the, I mean, the notes that I'm looking for particularly, if it, I mean, it's always been really complex. Uh, so with that said, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with, with that. 
Mm. I can't get over how um, good this is, and I'm glad that uh, it's such a high ABV. This hopefully this will last longer than the uh, 40 and 43 percent bottles usually do around here. If you know what I mean. So there you go. <laughs> I do need to uh, let's have other questions, but I'm not gonna. Wait. Oh no, you're not wearing this out, man. That's that's what we're here for, really. It's uh, part of the fun is to um, get people excited and to steer them in the right direction. I love the tobacco note in the back end of this too. I didn't talk about earlier. It's got a really nice uh, tobacco uh, note in the finish too. Um, sorry, I was uh, sidetracked there. But um, we want to get you going in the right direction, too, because we've made mistakes. You know, we've bought bottles that is a, just a definite no-no. We've made risks on getting bottles that you would think would be great that end up not being so great. Um, there are distilleries out there that, you know, that are very, very famous that, that, that sell probably loads and loads of whiskey. But comparatively to other ones that uh, as far as quality and, and what you get out of the buck don't really make sense to buy so that's what we're here for as well it happens a lot yeah i need more too steve says <laughs> i need to try more standard spring bank bottles yeah uh steven i think uh if you're leaning, if you're always doing the um the independence on spring bank that'd be kind of weird to me because i don't even know if i've ever had a, a independent spring bank before if that's what you're referring to, uh, Stephen, let me know. I'm pretty sure they age all the Karens in the same warehouse as Asprey make. Anyway, verify that. Um, don't quote me on it, but I think you're correct. Um, I'm trying to remember. I remember there was a mention recently of like how they did their uh, their business. But I can't remember the details, but that sounds familiar. We'll put it that way. So I wouldn't be surprised if you were correct on that, uh, Travis. But I can't completely 100% verify it. Hopefully somebody else can. Um, Daniel says, I have a good neat question. If you were going to have the last dram for the night, where are you picking? A last dram tonight? Oh, man. Um, well, it depends on what you start with. Now, this is important. When you're doing a tasting with your friends, I definitely recommend thinking thoroughly about what you're going to do and what order you're going to do it. Never start with peat and never start with a, a heavy sherry dram. Uh, I wouldn't start with anything that's heavy, period. Always start with your lightest stuff first. If you've got a 40%, 43%, especially if it's a lowlands or highlands, you got to start with those first. Um, if you've got, you know, your... Uh, 46 to 48 and then you kind of get into like um it might be slightly peated as far as like a heather repeat like a holland park or it might have a little sherry like a mccallan that would be like your second or third offering um start with your older stuff first you're going to get a better appreciation i think for the uh, older refined delicate drams um Definitely have some sort of cap palate cleanser like cracker, you know, definitely uh, Like a, even a salted chip that's not flavored is a good option water out the yin yang Always have a big glass of isca. <laughs> I I do mine by the jerk by the British pint <laughs> as you can see Because you know when you drink a lot of this you need to drink a lot of this so With that said Let's say, like my 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 one of my dream, like a uh, just a dream type of situation, uh, fictitious. Let's say I had a start out with. I would like to start off with like something like uh, Buna Havens three there, which is like a forty three percent non a statement basic. Good Buna Haven though, maybe not as as great as the twelve or the eighteen for that matter. It's still a solid entry. It's a good palate starter, I think. It's not overly anything. It does have sherry in it, but it's not a. It's not going to blow your socks off, and it's not peated. Uh, but it's got a good flavor, good taste. So that's a good starter. Second one would be something like this: a nice, uh, really uh, heavier sherry whiskey. Uh, definitely do that before your peats. Your peats should always come last. Um, 
And I think I am going to hit the, I might have a little sip of the Supernova from 2009. It's a, the first stellar release Supernova I've got back there from Ardbeg. It's a bottle you're never going to find, unfortunately, most likely, unless you get really lucky, yeah, like I did, and find it just off the person that had it and didn't really, I mean, they knew what they had. I didn't rip them off or anything, but they were like, I know you'll appreciate it, so I'll just sell it at a really, really cheap price. And I'm like, <laughs> you don't have to ask me twice. I'm I'm, I'm already signing. As soon as he uh, said uh, Supernova Stellar Release 2009, I'm like, okay. But um, something like that would be a good uh, ender. Uh, if that if that Arbeg 19 Travana was open, I would probably do something like that. Um, if I had the Talisker 18, that would be a killer ending. If I had um, Holland Park 18 or 25, if I had, um, man, I'm trying to think of something off the wall. I mean, a little Freud lore is always good or like a, you know, 27 year old or something like that. But, um, it just depends. You have to kind of give me more of a narrow uh, base to work with because I could go all day. I mean, the Glim Orange has got some really good stuff. Like I like the Two Sale, um, even more so some some of the more aged stuff. I like the Private Collection stuff to it. Like the Astar is pretty good. The Spios is good. Uh, the Signet is is a decent uh, deal. Uh, you have to give me, I think, more of a narrow uh, mindset to pick from. Wow, you guys have been going crazy. Not an independent talking about, oh, I missed the comments one second. But talking about the core range, I've had the 10, 12 cast strength, 18, and 21. Oh, okay. I would definitely um, definitely go for the greens, if you don't mind organic stuff, Stephen. The green 13 and 14 I thought were good. It took me a second to warm up to, to understand what I was getting into, really. But once I... Tried it and, and, and don't be afraid of a couple drops here and there. I think it, it worked out really well. I think it's a good, it's definitely a good buy. The Burgundy is awesome. The, the if you can ever get your hands on the Springbank Twelve Burgundy, that is a beautiful bottle. I wish I had more of that. And uh, that's like a New York cheesecake in a bottle. It's it's so damn good. Um, let's see. The um, but yeah, I mean, uh, in any of the port and sherry cask higher in twenty. Um, 20 year, 19 year, 25 year range, uh, which I know is in your your wheelhouse. I think you'd be happy with any port that, that Springbank does. They do it correctly. It's not like other distilleries that get it wrong. They do the sherry stuff unbelievably great. They do, um, I think they did a decent job with the room. I don't want really to get into too detailed because we haven't done the review on that one yet. Um, when I do the review, it'll 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 be more clear to me how I feel definitely about it. But so far, so good. I think it might get better. Even we'll see. And then let's see. There's zero chance Telus has had an obscure Balconis. <laughs> no, I never heard. I mean, I've heard of the name Balconis, but I never tried any of it without looking it up. Spring Bank could carry me in the same place. Yeah. Yeah, there's a sister distillery uh, to Springbank. Is uh, Glengyle is this distillery name, and Kilcarran is the brand name that they use at Glengyle, basically. But it's all through Springbank, which also does Hazelburn for their non-peated, Longwell for their heavily peated. Springbank is their medium peated stuff. Um, Kilcarran is is I would kind of equate to very Hazelburn esque because it's not really peated and it's not as maybe it might be between Hazelburn and being none and Spring Bank being medium. So we go Hazelburn being none, then Kilcarran, then Spring Bank, then Long Row, I think is the peat level and smoke level that you're probably getting into. That's my that's my uh, take on it. Bubble the bubble. <laughs> What is coronavirus? Well, I think we all know what that is. It's been all over the news lately. <laughs> Not sure what that has to do with whiskey, but I'm glad I don't have it. We'll put it that way, and I hope it stays far, far away. And uh, we'll keep it at that. I think the 10 and 15 are the only core spring makes. I heard that they distill and fill the cask at Glengyle and then take the cask over to spring make to age. Okay. Sorry if this has been answered before, but how many Kilcarran do you have, and which is your favorite? Well, I've got personally, 
and people, other people feel free to answer too. I've got a four out of the, I mean, there's other works in progress, which I'm not sure if I should count or not. The only one I'm really missing out of the coherent that I'm aware of that's a regular, uh, not regular, I should say, but like a standard sort of release would be the uh, heavily peated. And it sounded like someone else really liked that one earlier. I forgot who it was, but uh, I might take a chance when I heard mixed reviews on the heavily peated, which would be more like a long road probably. Um, whoever it was, what did you think of it compared to a long row unpeated? I'm sorry, not unpeated, but uh, unaged, like the standard long row peated whiskey. What did you think the uh, Kilkerran heavily peated? How did it stack up against the long row? I'm just curious of what you think, if you're still around, hopefully. Um, but my favorite is definitely this one by a, a, a big time. But the price is also a lot more. If I had to pick between the four, the 12 is my favorite, uh, I have to say. I do like the eight, but it takes more time. It takes more finesse to get it right. The Sherry Woods probably my second favorite. So it goes 12, Sherry, uh, Cast Strength 8, and then Bourbon. The Bourbon wasn't bad. It's just they're all really close. They're all like 4 to 4.25 out of 5 whiskeys over there, this being a 4.5. So I've never had a bad kill, Karen, so I think you should pick one. Pick one up that you can find, basically. But if you can start with a 12, it would be ideal. Jesus is the 12 is limited edition, 18 is limited, 21 is limited, and 25 is limited. I think they're still talking about Spring Bank over there, if I had to take a guess. Maybe. Let me think. Sorry, I had to get my bearings here. Oh, wow. I must be way behind. <laughs> oh, wow. How did I get so far behind? Okay, there we go. I would pick that up, that green by now if it was the uh, 13 year, yeah. Bruyera is the god. Bruyera? I'm not familiar with that one either. Does that have something to do with the Balcones? <laughs> is it, are these Taiwanese malts that you guys are talking about? I don't do the uh, Emirates and the Cavalans and all that. Cavalan, I should probably say. But my accent, get out here. I've been drinking a little bit. I need to have some more. <laughs> Let's see. Let's pick up that green banana. Uh, they're limited, but released each year. Kind of like Arbeg's 19 is Arbeg does consider the part of their core range, but limited will be released each year. Yeah. Wouldn't recommend the 12, which I can still get as well. It's not bad. See, I'm, when you guys don't tell me which distillery you're talking about, I'm not sure if you're talking about the which 12, the Springbank uh, 12 cast strength or the Kilcarran 12 or what? Heavily batched, uh, I'm sorry, heavily peated batch 2 is very good. They have two batches already of the heavily peated for Kilcarran. I didn't know that. That's crazy. I thought it was just one so far. Jesus, that's fair. The 10 and 15 are only two that you know, consistent, maybe 18. Yeah. If you're willing, what are your thoughts on the clear lift? 15. Um, well, you have to be specific. Are you talking about the unpeated or the peated? First off, the 15 unpeated is still available. The 15 peated, I don't believe, is available any longer, unfortunately. I haven't had the um, that one. If I'm going to pick one to try, though, I'm going to go for the Kalila 18 Peated. That's going to be the one that I'm going to reach out for next. Um, that's where I, that's where I would go if I was uh, looking to get into um, into that. I thought the uh, let's see, Kalila 12 versus Spring Bank 10. Which would you choose if it had to be your daily drinker? Oh, man. Oh, are you going to do that to me? <laughs> okay, here's the deal. For me, if I had to pick one, I would pick the Spring Bank 10 because for my palate, I love the leather. It's a little, it's a little more thicker on the mouth coat. 
to the spring bean tin in my opinion it's got a little more girth to it a little more earthiness the the Achille Kern 12 is a little more refined and floral and it has more even more complexity but I think the spring bean tin has got a better taste in general that's the reason why I'm going with it so I mean which one's a better whiskey I'd say the Kilkerran 12 is a better quality whiskey, surprisingly. But as far as like a daily taste drinker, like, man, it, it tastes good no matter what you're doing. I'm thinking the, uh, the Spring Bang 10 is a no-brainer on that one. Um, cost, they're about the same. I think they're both about 70 to 75 uh, here in, in Maryland, at least. So... It's not going to be huge difference. I think the Kill Care 12 is probably a little cheaper. Um, maybe 67 versus 75 for the Spring Bank 10. But the Spring Bank 10 is no joke. I mean, that's a solid 10-year whiskey that everyone should try at least one time, I think. Why are there uh, zero independent bottlings of Glenmos out there minus the few uh, SMWS bottlings? That's a good question. Um and I'm thinking it's because the same reason why you don't see a lot of art bags that are, uh, excuse me, independent. Yeah, I, I don't think the LMVH guys, uh, Louis Vuitton, um, I, 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 I don't think they get into the, um, I don't, maybe they're not really keen on the idea of, of having uh, people buy casks uh, very often outside of what they want to do with their own whiskey. Why that is, I don't know. Um, control issues, maybe. Um, get, you know, once you do get some out there, if, if they don't do it justice, they don't do it well, then you get a kind of a weird um, feeling on uh, if they, if they should be allowed, you know, to tinker and give the whiskey distillery a bad name, maybe? I don't know. It's a, it's a good question. Uh, that would be a good one for the LMVH guys. I do see them from time to time up at Petite when I'm up there talking with my guy Tom. So I'll have to, if I can see them again, I'm going to ask them, why in the world do you guys not get your uh, Ardbegs and, and Glamorangies out for, um, for uh, independent bottlings? Balcones, Bilge. Bahura, I'm not even sure how you pronounce that. I'm probably butchering the hell out of it. I'm sorry, but uh, is that a whiskey? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I like that the name sounds intriguing. I'll, I'll give you that. Balcones Bruhiria. Br I can't even say it. Bruhiria. Bruhira. Good rationale in picking the SB10 over the 12. Yeah, that's that's a. That's a rough one. Spring Bank 12 cast strength. That is is great. That's that's unbelievably great. A bit too cast strength in my humble opinion for a daily. Yeah, it's 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 great tasting, but I couldn't drink that every day. I don't think. <laughs> I I probably would have a problem. <laughs> I got lucky on the 12 uh, cast strength and picked up a bunch on sale price. Eighty five dollars. Wow, that's a hell of a price. Here it's like a hundred to hundred and ten. That's really good, man. That's unbelievably good. DHS still has the black box. Wow, a black box twelve. My twelve. I think it might be a, a black box. I have to go look. I, I've got my spring. I got, I got one spring bank up here, which is the nineteen of uh, port cast way up in the shelf, way up there. But I, I don't have any of the spring banks out here other than the new. Um, the 12 run, but uh, I think I've got a, an old 12 too, but I have to look. So I do remember it's different than the newer ones, which I think are red or something. Let's see. I've got to go. Oh, okay. Oh, you're in UK. Well, I didn't even know that new dram drinker. Well, I really appreciate you uh, stopping by before you have to go to bed. I know it's really late there. Yeah, it's 318. <laughs> But uh, hopefully you get to get a chance to come back by, and uh, I'll try to mix the, the times up in the show. I might try to do a Friday one from time to time, and if I do a Friday one, I might try to do an early, uh, early one so I can get in touch with some of you uh, uh, Europeans that are tough to uh, speak with unless you go early here. So um, hope to see you again soon, and 
Thanks for uh, stopping by. Let me know if you uh, have a request. Uh, I never get requests, surprisingly, on going through different uh, bottlings and such. So if you got something that you're interested in, in diving into uh, deeply, uh, definitely let me know, and uh, I'd be happy to give it a try. I can't promise I can find everything, but um, I do have, you know, pretty decent resources to find stuff. As you can see, over the last few years of uh, doing this, I've got some crazy stuff that I've wound up getting a chance to sip. So you never know when I might be able to conjure up Brugira. Brugira, okay. Let's see. Oh, a black box 12, yeah. Might hit you a little bit, but I love you, man. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I see what Steven's sipping, man, and it makes me, like, think, ah, oh, <laughs> I'm in the wrong profession. <laughs> it's a single malt area. Oh, Sherry H. Castry, Balconies, wow. Cheers. Okay, cheers to you, Travis, as well. Thanks so much for stopping by. Another uh, question. McKellen Reserve 18 from 1979 to 82. What would you pay for a bottle? Might have a source. Whoa. Reserve 18 year from 1979 to 1982. I have to say, I'm not attuned to that one. Stephen hopefully can answer that question. Out of anybody here, if you don't know DHS, maybe Travis or Steven might be able to to say. I'll do a little quick, uh, a quick little little searcheroo on the side just to see um, what I can find out of a couple sites that I kind of try here and there. Let's see, McAllen. Reserve uh, 18 year. Let me see if I can. Here we go. Okay. Oh, God. Plus, man. 18 year old Scotch whiskey. Wow, man. Okay. Single Grand Reserve. The Grand Reserve. Is that the same as that one, though? Well, this is 1980, and you're talking, yeah, 80, 82. Okay, this is the right stuff. Wow, man. It looks like, I mean, just going by uh, states, New York has got one for 3000 California's got one for 3900 as well as Illinois has got one for 3900 and then California's got a different one that's a little old, like one year older, but they went like 5200 for it. That's crazy. Wow, man. Now you're getting some crazy prices. But some of these go up to five, 6,000, even in the States. That is crazy. Um, I'm going to have to step aside on the. Uh... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Market value, but won't pay that. Wondering what people would spend. Jeez, man. I. I... I'm definitely the wrong person to ask on, on something like this one because it's over a grand and I've never spent over a grand on whiskey before. Oh man. Um, looking at the market and what it's worth, if I found one for like, and if I had the money, which I don't, but if I did have a couple grand sitting around, I would say 2000 would be safe without a lot of risk. Once you exceed 2,500, though, I think you're getting a little maybe overkill. That's my initial reaction, but I'm not uh, the best person to talk with on that one. Probably Steven or uh, hmm. yeah, I'm thinking Steven or uh, who else was it? I mentioned them earlier that was around that might be able to know on that one. Let me go back here. Be great to get you on our channel at some point if you're a fancy. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be awesome, new uh, dream drinker. I'll definitely be up for that. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, my my email address is telex at outlook.com. That's telex, T L E X, at outlook.com. Send me a message and I'll be happy to uh, 
meet up with you at some point and uh, maybe figure something out and vice versa. I'll try to look you up and see if I can uh, get a hold of you on the side. I'm not sure if you've got a, an email address that's easy to uh, get to, but hopefully you'll, you'll, you're still around and uh, send, me, uh, send me one and I'll be happy to uh, take a look into that. So I was going to send you a picture. Okay, that's cool. I'm not sure if you sent an email or not, but uh, hopefully you did. Because I don't know if I can receive any pictures through this little chat window. Most likely not, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Let go down here. I'm going to eventually send you some insights as soon as I learn. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you uh, find out anything that you're asking that you don't find out here, definitely feel definitely always feel free to come back and tell us about what you found out because this is a good resource I think for uh, learning as much as you can about all sorts of things that have to do with uh, scotch. I checked a couple of auction sites and they're going for an average of twenty one hundred pounds plus a ten percent hammer plus twenty four percent tariffs plus shipping and insurance my goodness gracious that is crazy but anyone know what they'd spend it's forty percent forty percent ABV is really I mean I personally would never spend anything hardly on a forty percent ABV because I've, it's very rare that I've ever had a 40% whiskey that I thought was great. With that said, I haven't had a whole lot of really old stuff. So uh, I'm sure there's glorious 30, 40 year old whiskeys out there that are only 40%. But it makes me nervous when the ABV is that low. That's all I'm going to say. Because uh, there are so many good single casks, old whiskeys out there that you can get that's still 50 something percent. And that's still 1980s, 70s uh, stuff, I'm sure. Um, like the Glendronic stuff is a good example of that, where I would much rather have the Glendronic single cask uh, old stuff compared, uh, I think. But I, I mean, there's got to be a reason why this stuff is so expensive other than it just being called McKellen, I would, I would hope. Uh, but I've, uh, the best McKellen I've ever tasted is either a, a 21 year fine oak, which was, which great, uh, or the um, red cast black, but that's in a whole different category the $3,000 whiskeys. It's not even, not even close. So I'm wanting to offer 600 ish and see. Yeah. If you can get someone to bite six for $600 DHS, then, you know, I think that's, that's a good, a good deal. Thoughts on Cajonan. I have, um, my favorite, personal favorites of Oklahoma, I love the, um, the original cast strength is, is one of my top favorites along with the red wing, the red wine cask from Oklahoma. Those are my top two. I did enjoy the, um, the single cast strength, which I got like a bourbon cask. Uh, Country Vintner did a special release. It's that red one up there. Uh, this other red one is the red the red wine cast, the darker red one. But uh, those are like my top favorites. Uh, second tier would be like Lotgorm is pretty good. I'd say the uh, Seneg and the uh, Sauternes casts. Um, the vintage uh, 2008 was was tasty as well. Um, in the STR, but. Uh, the only one at home that I don't really get heavily into is the 100% uh, Isla stuff for the Moncure Bay are not my favorites only because to me they're a little more one dimensional when it comes to um, the florals and the, I mean, they're, I shouldn't say one dimensionals, but their, their um, audience is more into like the florals and the fruits, the lighter end stuff, people that like more of the Highlands um uh, it's Bayside's versus the more Campbelltown Isla stuff. It um, very light and heavily on the barley. Um, like the Springbank local barley, I thought is a, it's a good dram, but um, like the bourbon woods and things like that, they're not very complex for me. I, they're a good taste, but I don't get a lot of different notes from them like I do these other ones. Excuse me. So that's where I, I have to to say my favorites are I, I have my eye on a cool point that I'm, I'm going to pick up hopefully soon 
which I haven't had before. The Sligo Bay is another one that's rare. That's a travel retail exclusive, I believe, that I might have to snag. Um, not missing very many other ones other than that. Like your bay, I already talked about 100% Isla. is kind of similar to that, too. So those are like last on the uh, list. Uh-oh. I think I see something here. Let's see. I wouldn't sit less at a day my place unopened. <laughs> Yeah, there's very few things that sit in here and open unless it's like extremely rare or hard for me to get or, or what I consider expensive. That's an incredible price if you can get it for 600. Hell yeah. I mean, that's why I'm thinking he's uh, going to be really lucky if he can get his hands on that. Wow, I'm right behind. Sorry, guys, I'm catching up. Let's see. Yep, damn, still going. We don't, we don't, we don't waste any time here, man. I gotta pour myself another dram or something. I'll put my glass over there. The uh, I know a person who uh, knows someone who has a vertical with them. Doesn't drink. Swami thinks Bernie wanted the bait. <laughs> I'm not getting into any political discussions on my whiskey channel. You guys can talk about it if you want, but. I'm staying clear of the of uh, all the noise. <laughs> but thankfully, I got enough stuff, other stuff to worry about than uh, than all that mess. <laughs> oh man, we can get exchange samples once you get it. Yeah, I doubt I get it, but a lot of people. Yeah, I told you what I recommended on the Kill Homans already. So there you go on that. How's the Kill Karen 15? It's it's excellent, man. I like I, I I told you earlier. I think you should definitely pick pick it up. Uh, I've I don't see how anyone could really ding and ding it for anything. I mean, it's not colored. It's not chill filtered. It's got a good H statement to 15. It could be older. Could be more you know mature in that way. But as far as the ABV is great, 51.5 and uh, great nose, great palate, great finish. Man, and it's great neat. I, I, I'm much rather have it neat than anything else. So I'm toasty. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on a mission, I guess. <laughs> Let's see. Speaking of older stuff, I'm going to uh, taste it. Old dusty bourbons. That should be good. Never had uh, that one, but lots of people. Love them. A chessman? I don't think I've had a chessman either. 67, which is considered the best bourbon mess on. Looking for you. Okay. A gold wax makers. A 72 year old Fitz from Stitzel Weller. Wow. Oh, Julian Van Winkle. <laughs> $150 immediately. I'm not buying it. <laughs> Oh, this one, yeah. This, well, you don't have the tariffs. See, the tariffs are killing us, Swami. The the tariff uh, without the tariffs, you could probably get it for like around a hundred Canadian. I'm thinking. Um, I don't know the exchange rate though, so don't quote me on that. It was one eighty American here with the tariffs. So without the tariffs, I'm thinking it would be like one forty ish. So it would be under your 150 uh, threshold if you're talking American. If you're saying 150 Canadian, then you're just screwed. <laughs> Might have shot at a few raffle items. That'd be cool. So you could buy Young whiskeys for 150 bucks. Yeah. No, I hear you there. This is not that – I mean, I mean, this is not old by any you know, means because it's 15. But, I mean, look at that color, man. It's it's, it's unreal. It's it's a, a, a great uh, – let's have some more. What the hell? It's um, I just I just love absolutely love that color, and it's just so easy to drink at fifty one. I mean, it's uh, I can't get over it. Stephen, have you opened up yours yet? You got to open up yours, man. Yeah, lucky bastard. You don't have tariffs. <laughs> Stephen, if you haven't opened it up yet, I think it's time to to get it out, man. Look at that. That's just unreal. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's young, but, I mean, 
at least it's not 10 and at least it's not um you know e150 eyes and if it's you know at least it's not the color of you know golden straw either it's it's an, a really nice oloroso uh sherry cask and with the bourbon in there as well which which i think make helps the balance a lot i love the fact that they did the 10 years with the, the Larosa sherry but in the five years with the refill bourbon ties i think that was a, a really good uh, a smart marriage i i the best of, of all worlds basically he's pouring something i wonder what he's pouring <laughs> Spring make it cost more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, uh, Swami. You got to remember these guys do everything in house. They bottle, they market, they, they malt, they distill, they mash, they, I mean, hell, they do it from the, the ground to the, to your mouth. They do it all. <laughs> it's fun knowing our prices are better than yours now. <laughs> Spring bank is overpriced. Oh, come on. I don't know about that, man. It has been for a few years now. Well, I will say that the older stuff, well, I guess that 10 is 75 bucks, and that is a little high. I won't argue with you there, maybe, but I don't know, man. It's, it's it, it, the, the taste is outstanding. I mean, g give me another, minus the Balvenie 15 single barrel, that's this quality. It's a 15-year single cask. I, I can't think of one off the top of my head uh, quickly. Because unfortunately, a lot of these distilleries don't offer. Um, I mean, this is better than the, the – I mean, I like the Kilhoman single cask bourbon I had, but I think this is better than that, maybe because of the sherry. Um, but that's just my uh, my take. <laughs> yeah. He, he, yeah, don't listen to him. He dropped eight hundred dollars on the damn Spring Bank Twenty Five. That's crazy. I'm buying only secondary and decorative glasses from the. EU. Oh my, you guys are crazy. Hmm. What'd you end up pouring there, Stephen? I'm just curious. Oh, uh, Glen Glen Twenty Eight. Is that? Is that Glen Glen 28? Is that a distillery uh, bottle or is that an independent? Um, tell me a little detail on that. I don't remember them having a... I've had the 21, but I don't think I've, I've had a 28. Jesus. You guys find this shit. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Glen Glen. Let me see what we find here. Got a 15 distillers gold. That must be a new one. Burnfoot. Never heard of that either. Jesus. Um, chapter one. That's an independent. Let's see 15, 12, 10, 25, 18, 21, 17. Cordillo. That's a new one too. Jeez. That must be getting a lot of Spanish casks or something. A nine year old patiki. Some cast drinks in there. Teapots, of course. PX Sherry finishes 17. They do have a 21 cadence head in there, but that's different. I'm not seeing it, man. Official bottling travel retail exclusive, you bastard. <laughs> they don't even have it on their list, man. That must be a pretty rare one, too. Is it thin like the other uh, Glen Goins there, Stephen? I'm just curious if, because. I like Glen Goyne's taste profile. I love the uh, cast strength in, in the teapot and a lot of the ones I've had. Um, I'm not a big fan of the mouth coat. It's so thin. That's the only thing that's kind of – that I'm, I don't really get into as much on the Glen Goyne. Everything else I love, though, so I'm not knocking them. Uh, you don't get any Billy Walker in this taste, do you? No, don't think so. I never seen a Billy Walker. I'm not sure what a Billy Walker is there. Going going 30 year. Wow. Yeah, I think there was a third. There was a 21 and a 28, maybe 25. I don't know if they had a 30 in here or not. Let's see. Did I say 30 earlier? Maybe. Maybe not. 
No, I don't think they had it in there. That's interesting. I bet that's really damn good. 30 freaking years. I'll have to look into this 25. Because I've had a 21. I didn't know they had a 25. But now that I know they have a 28 and a 30, it's like, damn. <laughs> You need a 25 years long again. 48% awesome. Is it thin like the um like the other Glengoyne's uh DHS? I'm curious. Because I find them to be all even the 21 I thought was a little thin on the uh, mouth coat, but hey Louis, good to see you. Um that one I'm gonna be doing a show uh more in depth soon. I will tell you that at I was, I was, at first I was kind of perplexed. I wasn't quite sure what I was getting into. The notes are, are different. They're a little strange to me, but I do like it and appreciate it. And the more I'm, I'm tasting it, the more I'm liking it. It does at first glance though, it's, it's, it's kind of, I don't want to say off-putting, but it kind of makes you take a double take because it's it's reminiscent of the green series of their organic barley that Spring Brink does. If you've had a, the Spring Brink green versus a regular Spring Brink, you know that it's like completely different whiskeys almost. I mean, yes, the same distillery, same good quality, but the taste profile is, is completely different. And this is the same thing with the... Uh, the spring break rum cask is nothing like any other spring break I've had. With that said, though, oh, Glenelaki, yes, I've had Glenelaki. Sorry. I've got an 18 over here um, that I enjoy, uh, Swami. Richie Z, good to see you. Wow, everyone's popping up late tonight. That's crazy. That's cool, though. That's funny. The um, long time no see. I'm glad you made it to the channel. Uh, Richie, uh, yeah, get, getting back on the saddle and uh, having some fun with that. Uh, the 25 is not thin. The 21 is 43 and thin. The 25 is 48 and fixes the mouthfeel. Okay, well, I'm going to be all over the 25 then if I could get my little grubby little hands on it. <laughs> it's wonderful, DH. Like Glenelaki, I've got the 18 year. I'm, I'm not sure of a Billy Walker uh, version or uh, what that really means, but I'm assuming that uh, he's the master distiller. Is that what you're talking about there, Swami? Just out of curiosity. The 10 and 12 are beautiful. The 15 and 18 are events. Um, I have not had the. Um, I did like the 10px uh, Glenelaki. I have not had the 12 or the 15 yet, but uh, if the 18 and the 10 are uh, sneak peeks of what the other two are like, then I'm sure that, that the whole line is is really good. It's really good to see Glenelaki having a really good line, and the uh, Glenrothes people have have done a good job on re uh, doing the uh, the brand in America at least. I'm thinking. Maybe better than the 25, but it's been a while since I've had it. Okay. That 28, man, sounds unreal. I need to get my ass to Hong Kong or something so I can get a sip of that shit. <laughs> I don't want coronavirus, though, so I'm not going to be going to <laughs> Corona Town anytime soon. That's what I'm going to start calling Hong Kong is going to be Corona Town. But actually, Wuhan province is probably not where even near Hong Kong. So I sound like an idiot like I usually do. <laughs> Oh my! Do you have the uh, Glenelaki Tin Cast Strength version? Um, I don't have it. I have tasted it, and I think that was the PX one. And I think it was really good. If it's the same one I'm thinking of, it's been a while. Um, is I had the ten right before I had the eighteen, and I like them equally, which was really strange to me because one being eighteen year, one being you know ten, but the PX cast was so freaking nice. Uh, DHS says, I argue that 25 is the best pure first fill sherry European oak showcase there is. Wow, that is saying something. That is saying something there. Wow, man, I'm trying to think. First fill sherry. So, DHS, are you a Balvenie fan at all? 
I'm just curious what, what your take is before I even ask any questions. Uh, do you like Balvenie at all? Um, first Phil Sherry, European Oak. Oh man. I'm trying to think of who else does that besides, um, Hmm. Anybody? Can anybody rebut his uh, argument there? <laughs> can anybody give another side that would be better or equivalent to a Glen Glen Twenty Five when it comes to first fill sherry? European oak makes it a little more tricky. That's like the quirkest Alba stuff. Um, hmm. Oh yes. <laughs> I enjoy many of the Glendronic 92, 93 casino cast more than the Glen 25. I like the Glen Glen, but not the biggest fan. Yeah. What, what is it, Stephen? I mean, the only thing that I personally don't get into with Glen Glens is the mouth coat. What is your, um, Stephen, what's your um, hesitation of getting into the, uh, the Glen Glen uh, fanboy uh, boat? I'm just curious. Put it this way, Swami says, uh, Hazelburn sold for 113 before it sold out, 15 cocaine, 15 for 180. Yankee dollars is just silly. It's the tariffs, though, uh, Swami. That's the reason why it's so damn high. It'd be a lot less if it wasn't for these damn tariffs. Now, um, how less? I, I don't know. I think it's a 25% markup from what I've heard. Uh, the PX Galanki, I couldn't stop pouring. <laughs> yeah, I hear you there, man. That thing is unreal. The thing with the Glendronic is that they add some pea elements to their malt, which distracts from sherry, be it in a good way, but it doesn't showcase the sherry casks in the same way. The single casks don't have any, don't have a hint of peat. Hmm. That's where it gets kind of touchy because I've heard mixed stories about that kind of stuff. Let me take a, look, a quick look at something to try to um, settle something here. Glendronic, right? So let's take a look at, like we know that with our profile, I think what you're you're talking about, um, DHS, is the smoke and not the peat per se, because peat and smoke are two different things. And glandronics are smoky, but they're not peaty. If that makes any sense, um, I would say that you're right that the smoke might um, distract from the showcasing the sherry, but I don't know if it's necessarily peat that's doing it. Is it always peat that causes smoke? That I don't know enough about the process if that's the case. Is it always peat that causes smoke? If you know the answer, please let me know because that's something that's kind of a dumb question I should I shouldn't have to ask, but I don't really even remember what the deal is. If it's always peat that causes smoke or if smoke can be caused by other um, of just you know, like not burning the uh, vegetal ground if it's if it's some other format that they're doing but the best uh first full share i ever had was the melon as a mccallan's but those days may be gone yeah i've had 26 here 1992 it's their brother the malt is just more median thick and that was a way better whiskey hmm but is it show a showcase of the sherry cask which I don't know, man. I mean, to say that the 92 Glendronic, and I have had it too, uh, courtesy of Mr. Uh, Steven, to say this doesn't showcase the sherry cast, uh, that's, there can be smoke without peat, but I'm nearly 100% sure that Glendronic has a single digit PPM. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not saying it's zero. That's for sure. I'm just thinking that this, like, when I look at the, when I look at a graph of of uh, glendronic malt, let me look at another one to see if I'm if I'm consistent on this. Give me one second. Let me look at the twenty one parliament, parliament, as well as some of these single cast stuff. Yeah. Okay. Smoke level is like right here. 
the peat level is like this. The spice level is definitely up. The herbal level is like an oil is kind of like medium. It goes back up for full, rich, and sweetness. It goes way down because it's not a briny dram. The salt level is a little bit higher. Vanilla is a little bit higher. The tartness is a little bit higher. And the fruit level is, 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 is back up at the peak. And then it comes back down full of floral on most of their drams. And they're pretty consistent on that. Um, but you're right. I can't say that the peat level is not at least a 5 ppm or some 2 ppm. I, I had to look and see if they have any published numbers um, to be specifically like completely precise but unless we see the numbers it's going to be hard to, to to tell but it's definitely they definitely have a lot of smoke in their um drams compared to other uh sherry uh sherry to uh, single casts and things like that but i don't know what would be better first one by a, a glafoy 10 cast ring or the lafoy triple wood cast ring oh man Okay, here's the deal with that. Richie, they're both quality drams. The, the Lafroy 10 cast strength is what I would start with for two different reasons. First, you need a baseline, and the, the Lafroy 10 cast strength is part of their core. It's easier to get. It's a better price point, and it's a staple. The only thing you have to be wary of is the batch numbers that, that differ. Hopefully, you're lucky enough to get an older one if you can, or one that does you know well. I haven't had a bad one. I've had a couple of uh, the ten cast rings. With that said, the Lafroy Carriages Triple Wood uh, cast ring is a whole different level. That's more of a, a particular one. It's it's more pricey. It's great. I do personally. I like it better than the straightforward ten cast rings, but I don't think you'll appreciate. The Lafroy triple wood, you know, cast strength without having that tin cast strength first. So get the Lafroy tin cast strength first, and then get the the Lafroy carriages version of the triple wood to appreciate that they're night and day difference. The, I think the caliber is different. Um, the the ABV might be similar, but the I think the quality is as much better with the carriages one. Just just I just think it's great and. Um, that's just me, but you know, if you like, uh, if you're not real big on the wittier oaky drams, and and you like more of the briny, TCP iodine notes of a Lafroy, you might like the cast rings better anyway. But um, that's the way I would do it, man. I just don't get the peat, and I've drove deep in the Glendronics. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely a meteor mall. I'll agree with DHS uh, right out of the gate on that one. As far as compared to other uh, sherried uh, expressions, by far, yeah. I mean, if you look at McAllen, if you look at Abelauer, if you look at um, the sherry bombs, typically, um, Glendronic is is definitely on the Mortlock side of things compared to uh, Glengoyne and some of the other ones. I'd say. Um, the meat peat thing, though, it's uh, you know that's that's the tough one. Is it's kind of I don't know. I mean, I think their malt is better, and I just flat out like those bottles better. I think it's a different experience, but also not pretty pair of single casks. Yeah, also gonna go out there. First of all, Sherry Hot Parks in the twenty years the best whiskey you can get. Sally, gonna get the bottles for that. Yeah, yeah, I had an exclusive malt that was a twenty five year cast strength. It was. It was great, but yeah, it's 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 hard to find stuff like that unless you're really lucky and don't mind spending two fifty for a bottle of it. Um, thanks, Jason. I like that. Uh, that there's differences. Yeah, it's a it's it's a big difference. It's a, anything in carriages is, is completely different from year to year, and uh, that said. Apart from the the core of the tin, the tin cast strength, the quarter cast, the triple wood, and the select, which don't even bother with select, but um, I consider the core of the the four minus the select. The select is kind of to me like 
they just wanted to uh, uh, try to find a way where they can get their bottle into bars where people would try it and not be afraid of spending, you know, they could charge probably 12 to $15 for a glass of it. Not very expensive. The bottle only runs like 30 to $40, I think, if I remember correctly. So there you go, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely meatier. I agree with uh, both of you guys on that one. 250 I spent 380 for my 28-year Caden said Highland Park. Worth it. <laughs> yeah, I was lucky enough to find uh, exclusive malts. They might even still have one if you're interested. If you if you are, let me know. Get, send me an email. And I'll, I'll uh, get them to hold it for you, maybe. But there's a Highland Park 25-year cast strength uh, that I've seen for 250 that I did. Uh, I went to New York with it to hang out with KB and uh, Bob H and the Scotch uh, for Dummies guys, and it was a hit. Everyone really liked that bottle a lot. Seemed like unless unless they hated it and didn't tell me to my face, but I think they would have said something on the side at least to say, uh, eh. "The point is uh, sorry." DHS is uh, my point is that much more than point is that they're the best showcase of the cast, not the best sherry bomb with those casts. But if that makes sense, yeah, it it, it you, you can definitely pick apart the sherry more you're seeing with the Glen Boyne, uh, because there's not a lot of other distractions going on with the uh, presentation. Do they ship? They don't ship DHS, but I might be able to. Maybe we can sort something out. <laughs> We could talk on the side. Uh, send me a message to telex at outlook.com. And uh, first step is to see if they still have something. Um, and we'll go from there. Did you uh, get the recent new Game of Thrones Mortlock 15? Yeah, I wanted it was pricey at 150. I do too, and I haven't seen it available yet, sadly. I, it's the only it's the last bottle I needed that damn series. I was able to find the client leash that I was missing. And I was missing the Royal Lotnagar, and I already had all the other ones, uh, thankfully. But I have not, and I need to get a Mortlock bottle. I was torn between, it's, it's tough, because it may be um, some of you guys, I'm not sure Steve and Connor might be able to do it, but um, let me know if, if which, which direction you would go. Would you go for the Mortlock 15 Game of Thrones series bottle? Which is already pricey at 150, or would you save up and go for the 20 year? I think it's 20 or 21. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's 20 though. More like 20 year. That's I think around 180 to 200. Would you go that direction? I I haven't really heard a whole lot on the Mortlock front when it comes to reviews. But let's take a quick look at something, and I want to see if there's anything new. With some of these newer bottles, um, let's see. So we've got the 16 years of Distiller's Dram. That's that one's. I see a lot. Okay, here we go. 20 year Cowie's Blue. It looks like it reviews pretty well. It averages about a four out of five on the uh, reviews. Um, some notes: um, very rich Dram with just the right amount of spice up front. Beautiful mid notes with some soft vanilla and warm raisins. The finish is quite nice, but I hoped it would linger a bit longer than it did. Still strongly recommended it. He gave it a 4.25 out of 5. Let's see if there's any other people that actually know how to write notes. So give me one second here. This is the more like 20 uh, Cowie's Blue Seal I'm talking about. That one I'm, I'm thinking about maybe pulling the trigger, but it's so damn expensive. Um, there's also that new um, Mortlock 15 that he was talking about. Let me see something. Do they have a review on this stuff yet? Here we go. Yes. That one rates pretty good as well. It's four out of five stars. Um, they rate really similarly. I wonder if they have the same juice. That'd be crazy. No, it can't be because the years are different. But this one's only 15 years. Most expensive bottle in the entire line of it, but it didn't disappoint. Rich bodied with a, a hints of smoke, big sherry cask influences give way to bourbon barrels in the finish. Sounds like a decent uh, try. Let me see if there's any other detailed reviews. Uh, smooth, warming vanilla and almond, a little bit of brine, almost like a rugged amaretto. 
interesting. Uh, smooth one with caramel flavor, but they don't really give any more detailed ones. So they both sound really similar. Both, uh, maybe the 20 has a little bit, like a 4.2 versus a 4.0 out of 5 on the reviews. Anybody had the uh, Mortlock uh, 15 and the Mortlock 20 that can compare? I'm just curious. DHS has just got some dumb Taylor Octaves. Moat latches, I guess is how you say that. That's where I've spent my money these days. Duncan Taylor Octus Moat. I guess it's an independent uh, deal. I'm not sure about that one. I don't have all the Game of Thrones, but that Mortlock sounds like a must buy. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Do you still post reviews on Story? Yeah, I do. I just posted a couple. I posted one for the um, for this one I just did. And the carriages 15 recently that uh, the carriages 15 year old that I did recently, I just posted those two on distiller recently. Um, up to 202 reviews on distiller, it was crazy. Uh, I did a Mortlock 11 cat, a classic cask, which was was actually not good. I do not recommend classic cask as an independent bottler if anyone's looking for one. Um, been burned a couple times by those guys. I just don't get into it. Um, it's, you know, might be cheaper, but you, you get what you pay for sometimes when it comes to this kind of stuff. So with that said, um, I need to um, see if I can get my hands on a Mortlock. I'm just, I'm just torn between the 15 and the 20 since they're similarly priced. It's um, what do you guys think? If, if, if anybody's had it, it sounds like no one's had either one or both. So I guess one of us is going to have to uh, take one for the team and buy one or both to see which one's better. I'm have to, I haven't looked for the uh, Warlock 15 in a while. I did a little bit of looking for a bit when it first was released. And then um, I got sidetracked by these kind of guys that I knew I was going to get into, but I really need to get a good Mortlock. And I'm thinking the 15 or 20 is going to be the best option. Cause I don't really want to go independent bottles. I know that the independent bottlings are really good on, um, on Mortlocks usually on the, like your black adders and your 80 rat trays and your um, cadence heads and your signatories, things like that. But I haven't seen any of their new bottles with fair prices. Yeah, that's the problem with uh, Diageo running the show still with Mortlock, but looks like uh, Glentronic possibly used a combination of coal and peat to dry the malt prior to 96. After they were mothballed, they've only used unseeded barley. Yeah, that makes sense. So maybe your really old casks and then early 90s might have some peat, meaty peat to it, but it's mostly smoke, I'm telling you, on uh, the Glentronics, but it is a smokier sherried dram versus the um, Glengoins and other ones that are more pure sherry uh, without the distraction. So I see both sides of that one. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll have to. I'll probably just do the Mortlock 15 first just to get it over with because that's the last of that series, even though um, not every bottle in that series is all that great. I mean, the Klein Leash is good. The Lagavulin is good. The Oban's good. The uh, Dalmany was good. The Glen Dillon was okay. Um, Roll Nottengar I haven't tried yet, but it's probably just kind of halfway decent, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Trying to get the Talisker was good, so I'd say like I don't know, maybe um, two thirds of the offerings were solid. One third, I mean the Cardu. Come on, <laughs> who likes Cardu? Anybody here a big Cardu fan? I'm just curious. <laughs> don't raise all your hands at once. <laughs> oh man, that is pretty crazy that uh, they don't use. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, it's it's got to be a smoke versus the peat on that Glendronic thing. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna have to wrap this up. It's already after eleven. I gotta work tomorrow, but it's been uh, fun as always, and I really appreciate y'all hanging out. And um, if you can't find this one, I, I don't think you'll be. Uh, 
I really don't think you'll be um, disappointed by any means. I'd be extremely surprised if anybody picked this up and, and didn't like it. I mean, especially if you're already a Kilcairn or a Springbank, Hazelburn, Long Row type fan. I'm sure 99.9 .9 with the line over percent sure you'll like it. Um, but even as a new, uh, if you like sherry and you don't mind a little leather in your um, in your whiskey, it's kind of a, an easy pick, I'd say. Oh, Santa Cruz cracked open at Old War, like 18 recently. He said it ranked among the best 18 years he's had. Wow. An old 18, though. That is where it gets tricky. Because if I remember, let me go back here before we cut her off here. Go back, back, back. 18. Yeah, that is uh, the 43.4% 18 year ex bourbon, ex sherry. That does rate extremely well. I think that one's extremely expensive, though. Do you remember what the price point on that one is? I'm just curious. Um, if you can post it real fast before we shut her down. Yeah, thanks, DHS, Steven. Oh, man, Richie, all the guys that were here earlier uh, that had to take off earlier, he isn't going to buy one. <laughs> hmm. So that bottle with Keith and Mike's. But Mike might not like it. He's a bit of a stop. He was a fan, too. Wow. Huh. I wonder if, um, Richie, if that... Uh, let me know if uh, what the price point on that was, if it was uh, extremely high. So I remember correctly, the old um, Mortlock stuff was going for some astronomical numbers when it comes to price, but don't quote me on it. Let's see. I'll give you a, a few more a few more seconds <laughs> to try to post real fast. Richie. Oh, well, hopefully he'll pop it in before we take off. Well, yeah, next week, I think we're going to do, um, and maybe even Friday, maybe before next Tuesday, we might pop in with the um, the Kilhoman STR, which is the uh, staved. I mean, I can't remember the T in this damn thing. Recharge, I remember. I, it's it's sad, but we'll do, we'll go in depth when we go into that one. And uh, uh, if we do Friday, we'll probably do a little earlier, maybe around I don't know, uh, right after. Um, I think it's seven thirty is probably a good time to do it then. Um, and if we don't get a chance to do Friday, we'll definitely do Tuesday at nine Eastern and. Uh, We'll do the Springbank uh, 25. I'm sorry, I want to say 25. That'd be nice. Yeah, Springbank 15, a uh, rum cask as well. Uh, oh, no clue on the price. Uh, the 18 was $300. Yeah, see, that's the that's the pain of uh, of that 18 year old. I mean, yeah, he probably bought it when it was more like $100. Um, Three hundred dollars for an eighteen-year-old is, is, unless it's like superior in cast strength, and you know it's non-chill filtered, non-colored, and, and a perfect specimen. It's it's really tough to justify spending that kind of money on it. But um, hopefully, I can find one. That would be ideal to find an old version of the more like eighteen. But the good news is, it sounds like that the twenty is basically that. But I don't know. I'm trying to remember the price point of the 20 was the new 20. And I think it might be close to, I don't know if it's as high as 300, but it's two to something. I'll have to look into it and see. Well, well with that said, uh, Salon Shavad, guys. And uh, we'll see uh, everyone again soon, hopefully. If uh, not Friday, which is my goal, we'll definitely do uh, Tuesday to make it a regular thing. And, uh, McKellen 18 is now 315 Ohio. Oh, geez. Some of these brands, man, these prices are, are killing me. But uh, if the tariffs don't kill you, the uh, distillery price will. <laughs> Salon 